Hi everybody, I am Parimla Gandhi, Assistant Professor Senior Grade, working with DC Department, KIT Kalangar Karnanadi Institute of Technology, Kayamatur. I am going to handle a topic related with control system engineering. My topic is block diagram production techniques. Block diagram is basically for modeling of any simple or complex system. That system can be of any type. It can be a thermal system or mechanical system or electrical system. It actually includes many number of blocks which are interconnected with each other. For all systems, we can also have transfer function where it is the ratio between transformation of output signal to the transformation of input signal when all the initial conditions are substituted at zero. The system can be a simple system or a complex system where for example we have given two different uh, systems where simple systems include includes only very few blocks and complex systems are having multiple blocks which are connected in any way. Why we have to go for block diagram reduction? Normally as previously shown the complex block diagrams cannot be solved for finding the transfer function easily. So we can make or we can change any arrangements of the blocks and connections are also for easy calculation of transfer function. So the block diagram reduction techniques are having seven different uh, rules where the first one is combining blocks which are in cascade or in parallel. First one shows cascade combination means the blocks are connected one after the other where it can be simplified as a single block with multiplication of two gain factors and the parallel combination can be replaced by a single block by having the gain factors arithmetic sum. The second rule is moving a summing point behind a block. In this case, if the summing point is moved behind a block, the effect of the gain factor G will also be included at the resultant signal. So to avoid that, in the second incoming signal, the gain factor value is to be included to equalize it. Third rule is moving a summing point ahead of a block. In this case, the resultant signal will get multiplied with the same value g though the second signal should not be having that factor. So to equalize it, the second signal's path will be included with the gain factor 1 by g. Fourth rule is moving a pickoff point behind a block. In this case, the as previously mentioned, the same thing will happen. So we have to include the gain block 1 by g on the feedback path from which the takeoff point is included. Next rule is inverse to the previous fourth rule that is moving a pickoff point ahead of a block. In this case, the effect of the gain factor G will not be there in the feedback path. So again it is to be included as G on the feedback path. Sixth rule is eliminating a feedback loop. Normally for a feedback loop, the transfer function is forward path gain divided by 1 minus R plus forward path gain into feedback path gain that is G by 1 minus R plus GH. So if simply a single block with this, with this transfer function is included that is sufficient for a feedback loop. The second diagram is also same in which only the feedback path factor is taken as 1. Seventh rule is swapping with two adjacent summing points. In this, if there is no takeoff point in between two summing points, it does not uh, have any difference in uh, swapping the summing points. We have to keep track of these uh, corresponding incoming signals so that the value will not be affected. So these are all the rules. All the, these are to be used when we go for the block diagram reduction. So first example. 
there is the system with the complex connections whereas by applying different uh, rules we can uh, have the solution so the the loop which is marked as i is to be resolved first we have to normally take the innermost loop then after simplifying that the outermost loop is to be considered so in the first case if we move the take off point ahead of a block then we will have the two blocks g2 and g3 will be in cascade so by combining them we can have the gain factor as g2 g3 again g4 and g2 g3 will come in parallel connection so it can also be replaced by a single block as g4 plus g2 g3 that is only shown next again moving the pick up point b behind a block g4 plus g2 g3 we can have the block diagram as this where since the pick up point is taken after the block so the its effect is to be equalized so that uh, feedback path includes a new factor 1 by g4 plus g2 g3 now the effect will be nullified now we can remove the innermost feedback path which is shown with 2 the loop 2 so just with the transfer function formula we can have that is as g4 plus g2 g3 by 1 plus h2 into g4 plus g2 g3 its corresponding transfer function which is the feedback path transfer function now this block g1 and the next block are in cascade connection so those two can be multiplied after that a single block will be available in the feed forward line and the it becomes a simple feedback path it can also be removed by using the transfer function formula so that the final feedback feed forward path gain will be g1 into g4 plus g2 g3 whole divided by 1 plus g1 g2 h1 plus h2 into g4 plus g2 g3 which is obtained after simplification again we have one more feedback path which is the outermost feedback path this can also be resolved by using the transfer function formula so that the final transfer function will be as given second example in this we can we are given with two feedback path in our, which are lying at the inside and final feedback path which is at outside so the innermost feedback path can be removed by using the transfer function formula as g2 by 1 plus g2 h2 now moving the point a ahead of this block we can have the block diagram as this now only one pick up point is there which is one only at b here two in two paths we have cascade connections so those two can be combined and finally we can have the combination as h1 into 1 plus g2 h2 by g2 again this feedback path can be eliminated parallel path can be avoided just by adding the terms now we have only one feedback path which is as given in this diagram so again by applying the transfer function formula we can have the result as this this result is also obtained after simplification now i have included two more uh, block diagrams which are of course complex block diagrams which i have mentioned all the available steps all these are for easy understanding so please go through all these steps and understand the steps
course the last one is so complex so its arrangement includes the following steps so follow all these rules and take this examples as a guidance and apply the steps accordingly and find the final transfer function of block diagram thank you